Rachel. Hi, we're video. Okay. <laughs> yes. What are we doing? Here. We're going on an adventure. Where? I'm not really sure yet where we're going. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we will figure it out as we go. Yeah, I, I gotta show you all the inside of her. She's got little bats everywhere. That's a pumpkin. That's a Pikachu pumpkin. That is so cute. And a Pikachu little fuzzy bat. Even her um, air freshener is haunted. No, this is actually um, made by Magic Candle Company. This is the smell of Haunted Mansion at Disney. What? Yep. That is crazy. I got these two. She's got spooky scrunchies. Oh, more air fresheners. Close in the dark. Spiders. She's got herself a pumpkin over here. The glitter pumpkin. Yeah, this is like totally the goth car. Also, this is for Christmas, but this is <laughs> snow place like home, but it has patchouli in it and it's hand sanitizer. Ooh, I'm gonna have to smell that. I'm safe in my car. I got three. I got two sanitizer down here. So yeah, we're uh, you're gonna do. So yeah, we're headed out on some kind of adventure. We don't even know what we're gonna do, but I think we're gonna video. And food at some point. All right, Rachel. All righty, let's go. Drive us away. <laughs> hey, Rachel, you're going the wrong way. I'm going to make the loopy loop. Then this loop? Yep. Hey y'all, we are going on a treasure hunt. We decided to head over to a flea market to see what kind of goodies we can find. So we're just gonna take you with us. If you're new here, I'm Victoria and Rachel's the one driving and we're super geeked where we celebrate all the things we get super geeked about. We both get super geeked about vintage, mid-century, modern, going out treasure hunting, trying to find really cool things to pick up. We've been going together for years and it's a blast. All right, Rachel, we're at Finders Keepers, Losers Weepers. <laughs> All right, you ready to go in this flea market, see if we can find anything? I've only been in here one time, so. I'm down. Maybe I'm always down with a new adventure. Maybe we can find some goodies. Hopefully some cool Halloween stuff, because that's what I always look for. All right, here we go, guys. All right. What is that? What? <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> I say you following me, Mr. Daryl. <laughs> that was Mr. Daryl. He's a family friend and happened to be next door at my house when Rachel came and picked me up. So that's kind of funny. He ended up at the same place. So we're heading in and I had already spotted some milk glass in the window. So I thought, ooh, they may have got some goodies in here because I've only been in here one time and I didn't pick up anything, I don't think. So I'm excited to see what they have and show you what we found. If you've ever seen The Sound of Music, some of my favorite things are brown paper packages tied up with string and that's because Back in the day, they used string often because they used paper. So they used it to tie these things up. And this is a chalkware apple. I'm gonna talk about chalkware in my mid-century modern series. And then who doesn't love a good Japanese occupied salt and pepper shaker? These were clams by Napco Japan. Kinda neat. And then you're gonna see me gravitate to a lot of these. These are planters and they're known as American pottery or California pottery, and I have a large collection of them. Behind this little pink planter, I also found a vase, and I was checking it out to see if it was one of the big brands. And you'll start to hear me talk about some of these brands. I'm also gonna do a video on American pottery and all the different makers of those. Then I spotted a vintage piece of linen. I do have a large collection of vintage tablecloths, napkins, and other linens. That one had a big stain on it and also looked fairly new. And then I am moving over to kind of look around and I spotted these little shell plates. I thought they were kind of cute, but they're very much modern. Just interesting. I hadn't seen anything like those. And then above them, up, oh, Grandma loves you so much. Above it was this vintage dress with polka dots. If you've seen our videos before, you know that I am a sucker for polka dots. So I had to take a peek and kind of look at it. 
And now I am beelining over to the other side because I spotted, up. Oh, that is not Jadeite, but this is Jadeite. There is some Anchor Hawking Fire King Jane Ray line of Jadeite. If you watched my video here on YouTube, you would know that it is Jane Ray because of those ridges. But those little funnel things to the right are marked Jadeite, and guess what? They're not really Jadeite. Sunbeam came out with a mixer called the Mix Master, and it's similar to the KitchenAid. And it had an attachment that went on top that you could use for juicing, and that is what those funnels are. And guess what? They came in four different colors. One of them was a green that looked very similar to jadeite. So people often mistake them as jadeite. And then, you guys, I found some more American pottery. These are actually Hull. So that is one of the manufacturers I was talking about that made these American pottery that's very sought after. And that's why this person had these marked up to $48 a piece. They were a very interesting look. They were like a cornucopia or a shell shape. And I thought they were really cool. And then some cute little doggy sunglasses look very John Lennon. And then I spotted this little portable iron or child size iron. I recommend reading a book called Pink Think. The book is about gender roles in the 1950s and it is very tongue in cheek and very funny when girls would get pink vacuums and boys we get tool sets for Christmas and what that meant for their gender roles. And then I also spotted this little Fire King, could be cup or mug, but it is in a burnt orange. I don't collect the late 60s, 70s colors, burnt orange, avocado green, or harvest gold. That's not really my era, so uh, I passed on that. And then if you remember, I talked about this pattern Alpine Swiss. It's by Stetson and Fire King also made some oven safe dishes that match that china pattern. Spotted some more milk glass. I had never seen this pattern but it is modern. It's actually corning wear and it's from the 1980s and it's called ribbon bouquet. And then I grabbed another milk glass here. I had never seen this pattern and it's marked MHG on the bottom. I really don't know anything about it, but it looks like this French pattern of milk glass. But again, I think it may be modern. And then this is a lesson. Don't put your Pyrex in the dishwasher because that beautiful snowflake dish is ruined. And I'm just taking a little gander around and I spotted these little ducks. And these ducks always remind me of my friend Mary over at the Block Vintage. Y'all should go give her a follow, she's awesome. But we have a joke about 80s ducks and I like to send them to her when I find them. I'll put the link to her YouTube channel below. Oh, hey, there's me and Rachel. Hey, Rachel, say hi to everybody. Oh, look at this adorable American Pottery Parakeet Vase. I love the colors on this. No markings on it, but super cute. And I like the Art Deco lines on it, but I didn't pick it up. And then I found these really cool Tupperware popsicle molds. We actually had these in the 80s. And so I have very fond childhood memories of those. But then I found this beauty. Oh, it's chalkware. It is a huge chalkware flamingo. And it was only $26. I was freaking out. It is not vintage. I don't believe it's vintage, but it's so cool. And I really like chalkware and I really like flamingos. So I did buy this beauty. And I will show it to you more in detail when I talk about chalkware in my mid-century series, but I was super stoked, you guys. It was awesome and for such, such a great price. Oh, there's one of those Toby mugs. You saw me pick one up at the bins in Mobile and you're gonna see Toby mugs all over this video. We just kept spotting them. So that one was $110, just to tell you that they are collectible. If y'all are enjoying this little treasure hunt with us, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up. I'm hoping that you're going to get some information out of this video and learn some things about collectibles. And there it is, my Achilles heel vintage Christmas decorations. If you missed my Merry Kitchmas series back in December, go give that a watch. I talk about vintage Christmas decorations in their history, including shiny brights, which I'm holding, and mercury glass, which you see there in those bags. 
You can find out all about them, plus see pieces from my personal collection. I really enjoyed making those videos for you, and I hope that you enjoyed watching them also. If there's any collectibles that you guys are interested in finding out more about, would like me to research the history of, then just leave it in the comments below, and I'll definitely do that. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a good one. $5, four ninety-five, dollars 1940 That's a lot. That's pretty, though, with the breast in. Mm -hmm. And that's, see, that's a shiny bright, too. This mm -hmm. is mercury glass. You see it? Mm -hmm. How you can see through it? Yeah, I have a lot of mercury. I have Carl's great aunts. Um, Christmas ornaments. They're just in the, the attic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the worst thing. Next year, maybe you'll have to put up two trees, like me. <laughs> I don't know if I have room for Overkill! <laughs>
They often were found on barware, and that's because there was a popular saying, seeing pink elephants when you got a little tipsy. There were three types of animals that were very popular in the 50s, and that was pink elephants, poodles, and panthers. And so I think I'm going to do a video on panthers, poodles, and pink elephants. What do you guys think? This is another American pottery. This looks very Shawnee. That's another maker uh, with that splattering. I have several planters from them. And then over here, I spotted these really cool plastic leaf dishes, but immediately could tell that they were modern because of how lightweight the plastic was. They didn't have any lightweight plastics in the mid-century era, except for celluloid, and that definitely was not celluloid. So I put it back and then found these cool, I love kitchen gadgets. So this was an aluminum milk carton holder. You can see it has a vintage Borden's milk carton in it. And so we were sort of playing around with it. Very cool. And then sitting next to it, I saw this really kitschy treasure. So it's a baking soda holder and it's a little ice box, which was the original mainstream refrigerators. Obviously by the 1950s when this was manufactured, refrigerators had modernized, but it's a really cute little throwback where you can put your baking soda in and put it in your modern refrigerator and remember how far you had come from your ice box days. And then right next to it was this really cool milk glass cereal bowl. You heard me talk about cereal bowl and mug sets in my Fire King video. This was actually personalized with someone's name, Bill. I imagine that these were premiums. They were put out by the company Westfield and you could get them as a gift with purchase at your local grocery store. And then there's the poodles, just like I said, very popular pink elephants, panthers and poodles, and there is your poodle pencil holder. Very cute. I saw this cow and Rachel's husband collects, we call them moo cows, and I thought it was really cute. I had asked her if she spotted it up there. This was just some weird elephant. I don't know, he kind of creeped me out. <laughs> Here's our big cat shelf. Most popular with mid-century collectors is the Black Panther, but as you can see, they had ceramic tigers. They came as planters. They came as TV lamps, all the things. And we'll get into those in the mid-century series. Up, oh, Rachel fan, another Toby mug. This one is not a Royal Dalton. It was made in England, but it is definitely a knockoff of the original Toby mugs. And these are Imperial Glass Cape Cod. These are actually my everyday glasses. They were my grandmother's and my mother's and now mine. And I wanted to show this to y'all. This is a bowl that this dealer marked as possibly Hull, which is a manufacturer of ceramics, but they are incorrect. This is actually Homer Laughlin and it's known as apple trees or orange trees and it is very collectible, but this just goes to show you, even the antique dealers don't always know what they have. So do your own research. This was a cool pottery shell. Again, more modern, you can tell by the glaze on it, but still pretty. And then I spotted some really cool 1950s plastic containers for your kitchen. I have a set from the 40s. I have bought and sold many types of these over the years. Very collectible with mid-century circles. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, please consider subscribing to our channel. We would love to have you. We have tons more educational content coming out about collectibles. And here I go with another planter, you guys. But this dealer called this a pink oven dish. Uh, no. That is not an oven dish, <laughs> not even close. How many are there? Five. Rachel found me these fabulous Winking Santa mugs. You re may remember them being featured in my Merry Kitchmas series. I did end up putting them back because this dealer had them priced too high. And I do prefer the ceramic ones over the plastic but it was a hard decision for me to put them back. And I did go past the shelf a couple times, second guessing myself. I may end up going back and getting them anyway. We'll see. Not for sale. How are they gonna do me like that?
Now this dealer is making me mad because not only did they mark up those winking Santa mugs, but they put out these awesome blow molds and they all say not for sale. What the heck? And this little one was from the 1980s. I had never seen him before. He was so cool and I certainly would have purchased him, but again, not for sale. What are you doing to me, lady? Really? And if you don't know what these are, these are actually blow molds and they were featured in my Merry Kitchen series also. And then she had these ceramic mugs that Rachel found that say vintage, but they're not vintage. What is wrong with this lady? Vintage, not vintage. <laughs> I'm mad about these blow molds, that's rude. All right, on with the show. I found these cool bowls and I was like, what are those? I've never seen these. And they say vintage charm inspired by Pyrex. Not really sure about that. Found this Mickey little mug. He's obviously modern also, but very cute. And then I saw this. What is this? What is it? And I lifted it up and it was Avon. Avon came out with some weird perfume bottles back in the day. Saw this lovely, lovely antique radio. Oh, wow, it is beautiful. They say it still works, but it was $600. So that was not gonna go home with me, but just wanted to share the beauty of that baby. Up, oh, and there they are. Some more knockoffs of those Toby mugs. Boy, that one is ugly. Made in Japan. And check that one out. Ooh. Their painting skills were magnificent. This one probably will look the best out of all three of them, but still creepy. And a nice big chip out of the chin. So, yeah, I would say those are not as collectible as far as the Toby mugs go. <laughs> so, maybe not pick those up. Rachel found this creepy Ronald McDonald mug. Woo, woo, it was from 1985. And then this cute little children's sewing machine from the 60s, so cute, love that. Then I found me a vintage cheerleading bullhorn and had to play around with it. And then found this really cool jar. It reminded me of Tang from the 80s. Do you guys remember Tang? We drank a lot of Tang but it was an anchor hawking jar, very cool. And Rachel found some creepy dolls, one whose eyeballs were missing. This is a really cool Federal Glass Company snack set. You saw me show one of my snack sets on my Fire King video, mine is actually anchor hawking, but this just is another variation of that with the little plate for snacks and your little teacup so you can serve your guest. Very cute. I loved this ballerina print that was under it too. And here is some more of that Melmine plastic wear. This is actually a different company called Aztec. Again, I'll talk about that in the mid-century series when we go over plastics. We're getting towards the end of this little shopping trip. So if you haven't given this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, please consider doing that. It would mean a lot to us. Also, don't forget to leave us a comment below and let us know what you thought our best find of the day was. We're really interested in finding out what you thought. And here is a Flintstones Barney glass. These were from Pizza Hut. These were again, gift with purchases. This was from 1986. And up, oh, I just found my second purchase of the day. This is a vintage glass bake, milk glass baking dish. So I will be doing a video on Glass Bake. Glass Bake is another oven safe company similar to Pyrex and Anchor Hawking line, Fire King. And so you will see this come up on that video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up selling this dish yet or if I'm gonna end up keeping it, but I did purchase it. It was actually only marked at $8, which I thought was great. So I did grab it. You all saw my Anchor Hawking snack set in my Fire King video, but I actually own this set too by Federal Glass with the little mugs. And Rachel found her section. It had crystals and incense, candle holders, essential oils, all the goodies. She was super stoked. 
And I found one last Fire King glass before we left. It was the Apple one, very cool. And then we headed over to my favorite Indian restaurant to grab some goodies to eat. If you don't know, I am vegan, so my friends are so lovely and usually accommodate my dietary needs. After lunch, we did stop in my favorite Goodwill that happens to be next door to my favorite Indian restaurant. Who would have known? And you guys, this thrifting bug is real. You know that I couldn't pass up the opportunity to at least stop in. I did check out some of the hard goods. There's that ceramic ice cream cone cookie jar no one has purchased since my last thrift with me in the store. I did check out the denim. I think I found like maybe three things to purchase, but it's more about the experience. And Rachel got her Halloween fix because we found these vintage Halloween vests. She looks pretty stoked, doesn't she? Anyway, it was all about a good time. We hope that you learned something from this video or just enjoyed shopping with us. Don't forget to subscribe, like, do all the YouTube-y things, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.